How's everyone doing? Today I have three 80s horror movie pickups and I'm very excited for all of them. And as always, if you've seen any of these movies, definitely let me know what you think of them. And first up is Toby Hooper's The Fun House. Toby Hooper, of course, who did uh, Eaten Alive, he did Texas Chainsaw Massacre, he did Life Force, which is one that I personally love. I never hear anybody talk about that one. It's basically vampires from outer space. I really love Life Force. If you haven't checked out Life Force, definitely check that one out. Great sci-fi and horror elements in it. I oh, can't say enough great things about Life Force. And he also did uh, Salem's Law and, of course, uh, Poltergeist, which there's lots of controversy with the Poltergeist and him and Steven Spielberg and who really was directing it. But his name is on there. And apparently now they're coming out with uh, Texas Chainsaw 3D. I'm so tired of this whole 3D nonsense, really, personally. But, you know, I do love the newer uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre movies, uh, the remake and the beginning. I love both of those ones. I prefer the beginning, but they're both very good movies, in my opinion. I, I know a lot of people didn't like them, but I love them. But The Fun House is from 1981, and I feel like this is a very underrated slasher film. I will say one thing I didn't like about this movie was the the intro, the beginning sequence. I felt like that I could have done without that. The, the little brother, that whole scene, I, I could have done without that, personally. But it is the 80s, so I'll cut it some slack. Those kinds of scenes are kind of typical for 80s horror films. But this is a very underrated slasher film, in my opinion. It's it's one of those great ones where they're at a carnival. I feel like so many films have taken this concept and redid it, but definitely not as good as The Fun House. And there's an Arrow release for this as well, a Blu-ray Arrow release it's, uh, from the UK. I definitely want to get that one. I know at one point it was out of print, but now I think it's back in print. And at the time I was looking at it, it was a little bit out of my price range. But I think it's back in print now, so I might try to grab it up. But, you know, I saw this one for a good price, and I just had to pick it up. I didn't have the DVD in my collection, and I really wanted to watch it again. It's been a while since I've seen it. I remember just loving this one, and I couldn't believe I didn't have it in my collection. Uh, there was one of those, like, After Dark Horror Film Fest ones, Eight Films to Die For, one I believe it was, and it was uh, called Dark Ride, which is kind of a similar theme to this one as well, where they're at a fun house kind of thing, except for that one, they were in Asbury Park, and it was, like, condemned. In uh, Fun House, though, it's actually uh, open and being run. But basically it's about four friends who uh, go to a fun house and they witness something they shouldn't have seen and they're being hunted down by this uh, deranged, uh, creepy-faced killer whose uh, face is all deformed and, oh, just such an awesome killer in this one. Just love that character. Love that, that freakish face. Just so many great scenes throughout it. And also I love when they show his little brother. Totally creepy. But again, the fun house. Really love this one. Very happy to add this one to my collection. This, again, like I said, just so underrated. And next up is The Killer Party uh, from 1986. This is one of those Warner Archives Burn On Demand ones. This is a remastered edition, and it does look very nice. It's definitely the cleanest uh, version of the film that I've ever seen. Now, here's a little tidbit of information about the film. It was originally shot in 1978 with almost 90, I think they said 90% of the film was complete, but they went over budget. And then the rest of the film was uh, completed in 1984, and then it sat on the shelf for a couple years before MGM released it. So this film has been through a lot of trials and tribulations, and it's great to finally have an official DVD release of this. I was so tempted for a long time to buy a bootleg of it just because I wanted to actually have a physical copy of it. And I'm so glad that it finally is an actual official release, even if it is burn on demand. The quality is still very good for this. The best quality I've seen of the movie. So I'm very happy to have this one in my collection. It was originally called April Fools, uh, but they renamed it Killer Party, which I like that name personally. They didn't want to get confused with a similar title called April Fools Day, which everybody knows the April Fools Day movie. I'm just going to go ahead and show you the inside as well, I'll show you the back to it right there. I've always loved that cover artwork. And it is a recycled case, but it's there's no holes right there, so it kind of adds a little bit of stability to the case. I always hear people complain about that, but... And there you go, there's the disc right there. Nice disc artwork. I appreciate that. Uh, it's basically about uh, three girls who are pledging a sorority, and they're, they have to set up a party at this abandoned uh, fraternity house that was shut down for like 20 years because a brother died there, and apparently he was dealing in the cult, and apparently you know he summoned up some kind of occult things and had some rituals going on. Nobody really knows for sure. And they're setting up this April Fool's masquerade party uh, for the sorority and a mixer between a, another fraternity. Uh, so that everybody's there, there's lots of people dressed up in different costumes, and there's basically a killer going around killing people, and, you know, it's, it comes off as, like, you know, kind of stereotypical slasher. Now, most of the killings, though, are off-camera, though, so you don't see a lot of stuff. You see a couple things here and there. Now, the ending of the movie is something I don't really want to talk about. It's just something you have to see. The ending of this movie was just epic. If you're seeing it for the first time, it's going to be something you're not expecting. At least it was for me. I, I was thinking, you know, there's little hints, and you see something, and you know, kind of, you'd think that it's going to go one way, but it goes something completely different in my opinion. <laughs> Look at that scene right there. Look at that face. But very nice to have this in my collection. 
And next up is Night School. This, is, again, is one of the Warner Archives Burn Demand ones, and it's the remastered edition. And this is Rachel Ward's first feature-length film. She was in a TV movie before, but it's her first uh, feature-length film. And this is director Ken Hughes' last film that he directed. So we got a first and last right there. And Leonard Mann, who plays the lead detective in this one, uh, he was also in Rogerio Diodato's uh, Cut and Run, which is another one that I love, and I think is very underrated in my opinion. And he was also in Silent Night, Deadly Night 3, which I could do without that movie, personally. <laughs> I love the first Silent Night, Deadly Night, though. I love that one. But this is a really good slasher film, and I highly recommend it. It's one of those ones where you could see the little twists, and I, you know, I was able to figure out who the killer was. I was able to figure out kind of the twist at the end. I just thought it was kind of predictable and formulaic. But even so, it was still very well done, and one that I very much enjoy, and I'm very happy to add to my collection. I'll go ahead and show you the back right there. And there's the disc artwork right there. And it's basically about a bunch of girls who are being killed and beheaded and their heads are placed in some kind of water. There's like a head being placed in a fish tank, a bucket of water, a sink, a toilet. And again, most of the killings in this one are off screen. Although you do see, you do see some of the heads, you know, being thrown uh, in the fish tank. And you see a head in the toilet and the sink and bucket, stuff like that. But you don't really see a lot of the actual killings. You see, you know, the knife and the slashing and stuff like that. But a lot of the kills are off screen. You see, you know, the body and you hear the screams and stuff like that. And there is kind of a psycho-esque scene in this movie as well. And it turns out that uh, all the girls are connected. They all went to uh, this all-girls night school, hence the, the title right there. And the detective goes around trying to figure out the connection and who the killer is. And it's a very underrated slasher film. And again, I definitely recommend this one, Night School, right there. And this is from 1981 as well. And thank you, Warner Archive, for, again, releasing some of these films. Even if they are burned, man, it's nice to have an official release. And I will say, uh, especially a killer party, uh, the print in this one is very nice and cleaned up. Uh, this one, the print is, is much better than I've seen before, but it's not perfect. I feel like it could be done a little bit better. Not as good as the, the print for a killer party. They are both uh, the remastered editions. I'm definitely going to pick up a few more from the Warner Archive collection. Uh, there's a bunch of different ones that I want to get. And I'll go ahead and show you the spine on these as well for the uh, Warner Archive ones. Very similar right there. And they kind of look uh, nice lined up together as well. But both these movies, if you're looking for a lot of gore, these movies aren't going to have it. There's a, there's a few scenes, but uh, again, a lot of the killings for both of these movies are off camera. You see the after effects of it really. But again, both are very enjoyable. I love the end to Killer Party. Ah, it's one of those ones that's just unexpected. Not quite up there with uh, Sleepaway Camp, but Sleepaway Camp, the ending for Sleepaway Camp is still an ending that haunts me to this day. <laughs> Never forget that, that face. I just, I can't get that out of my mind. Warner Archive, thank you very much. And those are my three pickups right there. Fun House, Killer Party, and Night School. And if you've seen any of these films, definitely let me know what you think of them. Leave me a comment or video response down below. And I hope everybody's doing well. Take care.